get through that because I want the bulk of the time to be for you all to uh, ask questions if you have them. And of course, this is not the only opportunity you will have for questions, but um, you're all here, so we just want to allow lots of time. So welcome officially to um, the information session for the family support request for proposals. Uh, I do want to mention um, Liz is going to hit uh, record now and uh, just you know, so you know that you will be recorded. Uh, the presentation will be recorded rather and posted online. Feel free to go off camera if you're more comfortable with that. Uh, also, please type your name and agency uh, name in the uh, chat just for attendance purposes. I'm Ann Margaret Webb. I'm a senior planner here with Youth and Family Empowerment. I've been with the city about 15 years and I am the coordinator for this particular RFP. Uh, and uh, I'm joined by Liz Fenton, our admin assistant here, who's helping out with all sorts of tech stuff. And then also Janelle Jackson, who co-wrote uh, much um, of this RFP and contributed greatly. She's uh, one of our new senior planners. And finally, Natalie Thompson, our planning manager. And I do want to just turn it over and um, Brianna and Zoe, you can um, introduce yourselves and, uh, and what your role is here. So please go ahead. Yeah, am I coming through okay? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I'm getting used to Teams a little bit, so apologies if I'm a little <laughs> slow. No worries. Um, I'm Brianna. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm with Communities Rides. Um, and me and Zoe are both here sharing a little bit about the um, technical assistance we'll be uh, offering for the RFP, and I'll pass it to Zoe. Hey everyone, also getting used to Teams, uh, but I'm Zoe, I use she, her pronouns, and like Bree said, we are with Communities Rise, and we are very excited to be able to provide free technical assistance for y'all on this RFP. Um, I'm not sure, and Margaret, if you want me to kind of get into the nitty gritty logistics, or if you want to do that towards the end. We'll we'll go through, and um, I've got a little um, section at the end, and then we can also Fabulous. just ask questions, because I think people are going to be um, very excited about this opportunity and just want to know more. So we'll, we'll do that as we go on. And thank you both again for being here. So just to kind of do an overview of what we're going to talk about, we're going to get into um, just highlights and timeline. We'll talk about what the RFP is funding. We'll also talk about what the RFP is not funding, um, some performance measures, who the priority and pop focus populations are. We'll talk about the um, application, like what needs to be in your application and how to get it to us. Also talk about what happens after you give us our applications, like what's the process and what's the timeline for that. There is an appeal process, so we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm going to give you just some very general tips um, and also we'll talk about how to get help with the application, which is where Communities Arise comes in. And then I hope that the bulk of the um, time can actually be spent um, on questions, as I said before. So RFP was just released this week and um, Written applications are going to be due in about a month. That's May 25th at 12 p.m. That's probably the most important uh, piece on this timeline is when you need to get your applications in. Uh, please, please, please um, get them in by that time. Um, that is one of our hard and fast deadlines. You'll have the ability to ask questions of me, the coordinator, uh, via email through uh, May 17th in a close of business. We may be doing interviews. That will be up to our rating panel. If we are, probably going to be around that last week of June that interviews will be held. We intend to announce funding both for folks who were successful as well as organizations that were not on August 3rd. You have an uh, opportunity to do appeals um, if you feel like we didn't follow any part of our process and you'll have four business days to get them in. So I think the very last day you can get them to me would be August 9th. We also have four business days to respond. So the whole appeal period would be wrapped up by August 15th. And then the contracts will start on January 1st, um, 2024. Uh, Oops, so sorry, clicked a little too hard. And so the, the services, have some certain uh, requirements. If you um, you need to be serving families who live, work, or attend Seattle Public School or colleges and universities here in Seattle, needs to be offered within the city of Seattle city limits. 
we will uh, be funding services that are offered throughout the year. So in other words, we are not funding just summer services or just winter or school services. It's 12 months a year. You can offer your services indoors, outdoors, virtually, some combination of that. Basically, it's whatever the families that you work with tell you that they prefer. And you'll just need to describe that in your application. Um, all funded services also will need to allow family members opportunities just to connect with each other, with other families, and then with communities. And we are looking for services that build on family and cultural strengths and also community assets. And our one broad strategy is just that we will be funding um, organizations that provide services for families to learn, heal, connect to each other and to community, and to celebrate unique aspects of their culture in order to build resilience and strength. So just to give you a couple examples, and I cannot stress enough, these are just examples. You are not limited only to what we have described here. You can do a specific type of um, classes, workshops ongoing. They can be one time. They can be a series about culturally specific child and youth development, about how do you adjust successfully to life in the United States if you're working with refugee and immigrant families, any kind of workshop or, or an ongoing class that would promote a culturally relevant growth and healing, self-actualization principles and practices for parents and for families. You can also offer opportunities just to gather with other families for resource sharing and mutual support and other um, activities that families want to do. You can offer opportunities just to learn about culturally specific parenting practices and how do you build resilient family relationships. Also opportunities for youth and families to suggest and create and then implement themselves cultural activities or learnings that they're just particularly interested in. And then finally, you could also do opportunities for families to learn from cultural teachers, elders in their community, or practitioners of their culture. So again, not limited to, um, to these examples, but just a few of the things that um, you can do. And then in terms of what services we're not funding by the RFP, while we do talk about healing, we're not going to be funding clinical, behavioral, or physical health services. HSD does invest in those things through our youth behavioral health services and also through our partnerships and investments in um, the City of Seattle, King County uh, Public Health. Same thing with case management. We invest in case management in other areas, so we're not funding it through this particular RFP. We're not doing emergency financial assistance or housing placement or rental assistance. We're not doing information referral services, day center shelter, food bank or meal programs or respite services. We have other um, investments that the city and sometimes HSD as well makes in those areas for this particular fairly small pot of money. <laughs> um, we are only going to be um, investing in um, uh, the family support services. I actually want to go back just a second. Um, so sorry, let me see if I can get out of here because we are had a little glitchy glitch. Um, so bear with me. And this is where I wish. Um, do, 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 I had mood, mood music or something like that uh, to be playing. OK, um, here we go. I'm so sorry. I, I got excited and I missed the very first highlight page. So um, thanks for your patience as I painstakingly clicked back and got into that. Um, I did want to mention that this is an open and competitive process. All of our investments um, with the City of Seattle Human Services Department um, are required to be released every four years. This particular family support investment we did postpone for one year due to um, the pandemic and impact of the pandemic. Um, so our last process for family support was in 2018. So that means that any agency that is successful 
uh, and getting funding will get funding um, for four years. So that's essentially starting in January of next year, going through the end of December 2027. And of course, that's always pending funding available, ability, contract compliance, and things like that. Uh, that does mean that then in 2027, we would be releasing another RFP for the next four years. So that's just how our um, process works. And we do have 3.8, about $3.8 um, and a million dollars in general fund for every year. Organizations will be able to apply for up to $300,000. Again, you will get that $300,000 if that's what you apply for every year for the four years. And I did want to mention, you know, there's lots of definitions for family um, and there's no one definition that's better or worse uh, or more important or not. But just for the purposes only of this RFP, we are defining a family as one or more adult caregivers or pregnant or who already have children, youth slash young adults, all the way up to the age of 24. So that does include kinship families, uh, and it does include families that may not have formal legalized um, um, custody arrangements as well. And then finally, I just want to let folks know if there's amendments to the RFP, we're going to be posting them on the same funding opportunity web page where you go to get all the other information that's associated with um, uh, the RFP and with all of our funding um, uh, opportunities. So it'll be right there. It'll also be where we post um, who is, gets funding and who isn't, uh, how much, and you know any information really about this funding process is going to be on the HSD's funding opportunity web page. So again, um, thank you. Oops. And again, sorry, we're just. Yeah, sorry, we're having a, I'm having some interesting issues. See if I can get out of here. It seems like it's. Doo, doo, doo. We're skipping a little bit. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, we seem to be accidentally skipping um, slides. So I want to go back a little bit and talk about our priority and focus populations for this particular RFP. Our priority populations, it's basically just a group that's a specific demographic or it has a specific issue in common. And for this particular RFP, our priority population are low income families. Our focus population, that's a specific racial or ethnic group within the larger priority population that shows the highest disparities in our investment area, which is families. So for this particular RFP, our focus population is American Indian, Alaska Native families, and Black and African American families, of course, who are low income. I want to stress other populations can be served through this RFP, so it, that's not a problem to do that. Talked a little bit already about service requirements and what we're going to fund our strategy. We already talked about our eligible activities. And again, these are not the only activities you can offer. These are just some examples to kind of kickstart thinking and um, help you understand what it is that we're looking to invest in. Talked about services that aren't funded by the RFP. And now let's get into performance measures. So we will be having performance measures like we always do with all of our contracts. We'll have a quantity, quality, and impact measure. Quantity will just be the number of families who are participating in services. Our quality measure will be the percentage of services that are offered, that are, in identif that are identified or developed with community. So that's something, again, that you will be doing when you're working with families is coming up with services that um, uh, families identify and that you then um, work with families to develop. And then finally, your impact measure is a percentage of families that are participating in focus groups uh, who also report a positive impact from having participated in the services that you are offering. And we have some legalese about requirements to apply. And essentially, the biggest things is just to make sure you've got all of your licensing. Washington State Business License um, number, your UBI, um, federal tax uh, number, your employee identification number. Um, you need to show that either that you're a private nonprofit, um, that you're federally recognized or Washington State recognized Indian tribe, or that you're a public corporation commission or some other legal entity or authority under that RCW code. Um, so again, we will ask for much of that um, on the very first page of your, uh, the cover page of your application. So please do just make sure um, that you have um, all that in order. Okay. 
And then what actually needs to be in your application? We're trying to whittle things down so there's less and less that you have to give us up front. You're going to have a two page application cover sheet. You're going to have your narrative response. That's just your response um, to questions. You've got up to 10 pages uh, to use for that. You're going to need to submit that proposed program budget. That's attachment three. And then also the personnel detail budget, which is just, just your staffing budget. So two budgets, narrative response, and a cover sheet. You will also need to do a startup timeline only if you're proposing brand new services for your agency. That's just because we would like to see um, what your thoughts are around when is your staff going to be hired? When are your programs going to be developed? When will the space be procured if you need to do those things? And then, of course, most importantly, when are you going to be um, up and running to actually um, be offering services for families? So again, startup timeline only for proposing new services. If you have what we consider to be a significant partner, please also include a signed letter from them that just briefly outlines what it is they're going to do. And the way we're defining significant partner for this particular RFP is a partner without whom you could not offer services. So maybe they're offering, they're providing the space for you without, you know, which you couldn't offer services, or they're the teacher or for, you know, for all your classes, or they're, you know, funding a significant part, something that they're doing that you could not um, offer your services without. We know you all have many, many partners who do things both big and, and large, um, and it's very important, but you do not have to submit a signed letter from all of your many, many partners. It's just the folks who are absolutely crucial to the delivery of the and implementation of the services. If you decide that you need to have a fiscal sponsor, um, you also need to have a signed letter from that fiscal sponsor, and the fiscal sponsor will also need to um, sign your cover sheet for you. And then in terms of how to submit your application, you've got a couple different ways. You can either submit through our um, online submission system that uh, HSD has, or you could um, submit via email. And we'll talk about how you do those two different things in just a moment. You can't fax it. I don't know that anybody has faxes anymore. We actually have a fax machine, I think somewhere on our floor, but um, please don't fax it because nobody checks it. Um, don't mail it through snail mail. Um, it, it, it's just not reliable. We're also saying no to in-person submissions. Um, so again, online submission system or via the email, we're gonna provide you only. Your application does need to be complete and it does need to be on time. And we are not as a department, as a city, responsible for making sure that happens. That is completely on the agency. So I always tell people start early um, just to reduce stress for you. And one more time, the super important date, May 25th by 12 p.m. Noon is when your application is due. So um, that is probably the most important um, deadline that we'll talk about today. Now, if you want to submit it online through our submission system, uh, just so you know, this information is all also in the RFP. And you just follow the link online to get to our submission system. Now, it's not the type of system that you can work on it, put some information in, save it, come back to it later, unfortunately. What it is, it's a type of um, system where you're going to upload your files. So you're going to upload your cover letter. You're going to upload your narrative response, your budget forms, your timeline or other things if you need to do that. Um, and it accepts a wide variety of documents, so it doesn't really matter how you saved it. As long as it's one of the major ones, PDF doc, RTF, XLS, um, it'll be fine. And it'll take you know fairly large um, uh, files up to 100 uh, megabytes. Now, when you go through the online submission system, you will automatically get a confirmation that pings right back to your email that tells you we got it. So you don't have to sit there and worry about did it go through, did it not go through. Um, you'll get that ping. If you do not get that ping, um, at, that's the point at which you need to wonder, hmm, what just, you know, did it go through or did it not? Not. And if it, you know, you don't get that ping, please do reach out to um, our funding process advisor, Sola Plumacher. Um, and again, her uh, contact information is in the application as well. 
Uh, likewise, if you're just having some kind of trouble, if it's just glitchy or something's not working well for you, go ahead and reach out to her um, and see if she can like help you walk through it. That's another reason though why it's so important to um, really try to not wait till the very last minute, uh, because if there's a couple people who are not sure about how to use it and need her help, um, it could really get a little bit crunchy in terms of the time. You can also just submit it by email. So you don't send it to my email. I know my email is all over the RFP. Um, this is the one thing you don't send to me. You would send it, submit it to the specific email that we use for RFP and RFQ submissions. And apologies because it's kind of long and complicated up there. Ugh. Um, but it, it does work. Uh, you will get, uh, you'll be able to submit attachments up to 30 megabytes with this. You need to make sure for your subject header, it just says the 2023 Family Support RFP because we do have multiple RFPs um, out this year um, and out at the same time. So you want your application to go directly um, to the right hot, so to speak. Uh, again, we just stress, you know, it, you're really responsible for getting your proposal in by email correctly. Um, and if you choose to use email, then, you know, you are accepting the normal risks. Um, you will also get an email acknowledgement. So again, you don't have to sit there and wonder, did it go through? Did it not go through? So on and so forth. Um, I do want to mention that these um, email acknowledgements and the online submission acknowledgement will not really say whether oh it's complete you didn't forget anything it doesn't know how to do that it'll just say oh yes we received it so it's going to be on you to make sure you uploaded every single document that you want to um, upload um, that's super super important and i just encourage you there's a checklist in the rfp itself just print that sucker out or use it however you want to and go through that just to make sure you've got everything um, attached that you want to Again, if for any reason you don't get that email acknowledgement, you want to contact um, Sola Plumacher um, uh, immediately so she can look into it, make sure that you got it. Every once in a while, something goes to someone's junk um, folder, but you know you just don't want to take a chance. You want to make sure that um, it was received and that you know it, everything's okay. So after we get all your applications. We're going to go through, check, package them together super quick, and we're going to get them to our reader panel. They're going to review your, your written applications. They may have clarifying questions for me or for you that um, they still send to me that I have to get to you. And what that means is um, sometimes there'll be something um, written in an application and maybe it's slightly contradicted somewhere else in the application or it's just it simply isn't clear. And so uh, raters are allowed to come to me and say, this isn't clear. I will then shoot you an email and I'll send the email to both the person who's listed as your AED, your executive director, or your, your um, director, and I'll also send it to the person who's listed as the main contact. And you will have a super tight turnaround. I think it's just two days, 48 hours, to get that back in writing to me. Just email is fine. Um, you don't have to go through the other email, I don't think. Um, so just get it back to me and um, let us know, you know what your response is. I will then get that immediately back to the rating panel so that you have that opportunity to clarify. Now, what the rating panel cannot ask is for missing information, things that, that you know you forgot to say if you forgot one part of a question. That is not the type of information that we can give you another opportunity to submit. This is just for clarifying. Um, so, you know, that that's just again, try to do your best to, to really answer every question thoroughly. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the tips. So the rating panel may also decide that they want to do interviews. Uh, if that's the case, they will let me know and then we will reach out and we will schedule those um, with each of you. If we decide to do interviews, then everyone who applied will get that opportunity. Everyone will have the opportunity to, to interview and, uh, um, you know, participate in that process. The rating panel may also decide, you know what, we're really good. These written applications were extremely clear. We have a clarity over um, who it is that we want to fund and we're simply going to move forward based on these written applications, at which point that panel, that committee will make those funding recommendations. Um, HSC staff does not. I do not. We hold neutral. Um, I do tend to read all of the applications as most um, coordinators do, but we simply do not um, uh, have any say so in what the the rating committee comes up with. They also will typically make recommendations for funding amounts. Um, if there, we often get applications that um, exceed the number um, or, or the amount of, of funding that we have to give out, um, and so they also have to make some um, hard decisions. The panel does about um, how much money to to distribute. 
those recommendations will then go to our HSD director, first going to the planning manager and the um, division director uh, just to be checked and read, uh, but the HSD director ultimately has the final authority to approve or to disapprove or to make adjustments to the um, rating panel's funding recommendations. As I said before, I've been here 15 years and I have never seen an HSD director um, who rejects those funding recommendations. Um, typically what the rating committee um, comes up with is, is what we go forward. I have occasionally seen an HSD director manage to scrape up a little more money to fund someone who was like right under the cut, but um, these are lean, lean budget years we're going into. So what is probably going to happen is simply what the rating committee recommends will be what we end up funding. At that point, we notify everybody whether you're successful or not successful. There is an appeal process that we'll talk about. Um, and essentially, you know, you have the right to appeal for certain circumstances. It's a very tight timeline to do that. Um, and then the contract negotiation starts. So you'll be working, if you're successfully funded, you'll be working one-on-one uh, -on -one with a contract specialist here at HSD who will go through and get everything um, set up for your contract so it can start January 1st and you can start getting paid um, that very first month. So the appeal process um, that I mentioned, and again, this is information is also um, available online as well. It's not just here, but you do have the right to appeal um, certain decisions in the ward process. If you um, feel like we have HSDs violated our policies, they're in our funding process manual, and that funding process manual is available for your review. Um, it's online, uh, and there's links here. So when I post this, you'll be able to follow the links. Um, there's also, uh, if you feel like HSD has a violated uh, policies or just have failed to kind of adhere to guidelines or the published criteria that was in the specific RFP. So if we have criteria, well, we do have criteria in our application, you feel like, oh, you didn't adhere to that, that um, is grounds for appeal. Now you have a tight deadline to get that into us. Um, the appeal deadline is just four business days from the date of the written award or denial status. So in other words, if um, we're planning on releasing um, funding decisions on the 3rd of August. You will have those four business days starting with the 4th. Now our HST director's written decision in response to the appeal has to also be made within four business days of the time that we receive your appeal and the HST director's decision will be final. We will not execute or start um, any contracts until the appeal process is closed. Um, so we can start working on them, preparing them, but we cannot finalize this process until um, any appeals that we receive have had a fair opportunity to be reviewed. And then um, if they're successful, adjustments made. Just want to give you a handful of tips. I feel like we have a lot of experienced agencies here, but never hurts to remind people, please do follow our required format, especially the page limits. If you go over the page limits accidentally and submit 12 or 13 or 14 instead of the 10, we will not be able to score or read um, those extra um, pages. They, they just won't be submitted as um, to raters as part of your process. Um, we do need things to be fair and equitable as we can make them. So we do have those strict page limits. When I encourage you just be as, <clears throat> excuse me, as specific as you possibly can. Um, I always kind of joke, you know, we we really are interested in our agencies. We ask um, detailed questions that have multiple parts. So just make sure you do answer every part of every question. We have criteria points for every part of every question. So that's a way to kind of check yourself. The criteria points are written right by um, the questions themselves. And you can kind of see, you know, they're almost duplicative what it is that we're going to be um, uh, scoring um, your, your response on. So just use that to make sure that you've answered all parts of the question. Please do double uh, check your budget numbers. Um, we always get some applications that um, have um, incorrect budget numbers um, every every process, I think. So just double check that to make sure that um, you're actually asking for what you need and not accidentally asking for less. Um, I encourage folks to also have someone just review your application. I like to have 
uh, people review like my RFP, for example, for clarity um, when I before it's released to make sure it's making a sense. I think it's uh, very helpful if someone who's not um, involved in writing your application can just read through it to make sure again you've answered everything, but also just to make sure it's making sense. You know your programs, you're so involved with them. You know you have so much back uh, backstory in your head and information in your head, and you just want to make sure that you get enough of that down on paper so that a rater who you know has technical expertise and might also have lived experience but doesn't know your programs intimately will still be very clear on what it is you're proposing um, to do. That is one of the biggest um, bits of feedback that we get time and time again from raters is that we simply they simply aren't sure what it is um, that uh, the agency is asking um, funding to do. Again, use that application submission checklist and then also start working on your application early and just allow lots and lots of time to submit it. Now, Communities Rise will be um, providing tech assistance with applications at um, no charge to agencies. Contact them as soon as you can because um, there is a limited number of sessions. They have a really simple, very, very short application form to fill out. We will be giving priority to organizations that don't have professional grant writing um, access to professional grant writing staff. Now, Communities Rise staff will be able to be thought partners and provide some guidance. They can't write your response for you, but they can provide that technical assistance and they have enormous amount of experience with it. And you can contact them just through the CBC um, uh, CB clinics at communitiesrise.org and that information is also in the um, RFP and they're here today so we're almost done with this PowerPoint and they'll be to answer any questions that you might have about what they can offer. If you've got just general questions you send them to me um, there's my address and hyphen margaret.web at seattle.gov you've got until May 17th at 5 p.m. Any questions you send to me, as well as all the questions that we talk about today, will go up um, in a Q&A page and will be posted on the HSD Funding Opportunity webpage. I encourage you to just check back from time to time because someone may have asked a question that you know maybe isn't even on your radar to ask, and then the response kind of clicks something for you and, and helps you with your response. Okay, so. All right, thank you. That was a lot of blah, blah, blah from me. Um, I appreciate everybody um, hanging in there, especially I'm so sorry about our glitch that we had earlier with our, our slides. Um, but I want to stop talking now and open up um, the floor to anybody who has questions. Hi, Anne Margaret, it's Natalie with the Hi, city. Hi, Natalie. Hi, I also wanted to ask Zoe or Brianna if you have any words today that you'd like to offer yeah. about the technical assistance itself. Um, anything you think that potential applicants would find useful? I can start Zoe and then if you have anything you want to add, feel free. Um, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Um, I think I probably feel most comfortable speaking to a little bit more about the technical assistance we offer and maybe there's uh, tips or highlights to come from that but um, we do some of the support and the scheduling through our team at CR and also work with some trusted community partners to do some of our consulting and so um, for folks who come out and uh, reach out to us for the grant writing support we're excited to meet you and get to connect you to you through this um, and hope that if you're thinking about applying that uh, I think Anne Margaret's advice around trying to get to it as early as possible and giving yourself room to make the mistakes and bounce back and uh, try and make sure that uh, forms are submitting and that you, the documents are in the right format and all that stuff, all the things that come, the little things that come with submitting an RFP that are, or an RFQ that's um, sometimes gets away from you when you're doing the intentional content editing that, editing that comes with submitting. So I uh, hope that y'all are giving yourselves room to just um, prep for this work and take the time you need. Um, and if you're feeling like you could use some extra support in navigating the RFP or just asking questions and you're struggling to get grant writing support, please feel free to reach out to us at uh, CR and we'll, we'll get in contact with you. Zoe, anything to add? 
Um, I think the only thing to add, um, other than what you said, Brie, which was all great, I plus one all of it. Um, so just so you all have it, I know it's in the slides, but here it is again, here's the email address that you all reach out to. Um, so when you email this email address, um, it's a shared inbox, but I will be the one responding to you all. So you can put a face to the name. Um, and then what will happen is you'll reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in the HSD Human Services Department um, Family Support RFP. And then I will write back to you to you with the form that you'll need to fill out that Anne margaret mentioned. Um, we tried to make it as short as possible, um, but there are some questions, you know, and so basically the questions will help your consultant have a better idea of like what your org is doing and um, what kind of specific support you might be needing, whether it's, you know, okay, we want to like understand the RFP a little better, or it is doing some of that brainstorming or it's reviewing a draft. We can do all of those things. We just, like Anne margaret said, we can't write it for you. But anyway, after you submit the form, um, I will reach out to one of our consultants that we have um, on board for supporting this RFP. And then just to check in on their capacity, make sure they're ready to take on another, um, another client. Um, and then after they say, yes, I'm ready to go, I'm excited to help, then I'll connect you to them. And then they will um, schedule an appointment with you. Um, that's something that's mutually agreeable. Um, and, you know, we just want to make sure that we're helping you all as best as possible. So that's kind of what that will look like. And then um, towards the end of the process, if you um, have received support from us, you'll also receive an evaluation um, from us just because we wanna make sure, like I said, that we are supporting you all in the best way possible. And so it'll just ask you a couple of quick questions and it will take no more than five minutes. So that's just kind of what the process looks like just so you all have a better idea. I think that's, that's it. So I'll hand it back to Anne Margaret. Thank you. I really appreciate you both being here so they could see that the face um, faces that'll be helping them. <laughs> so folks um, can feel free to write a question in the chat. You can just um, speak up. I know we've got some folks calling in, so I wanna make sure they also have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, And if you don't have questions now, I um, this isn't the only time you're going to be available. Uh, I'll, I'll be available to ask them to help everybody. You can um, anytime you like. You can reach out up to that deadline. Oh, we've got one coming in. Let me see. Oops. Can you define how you're de how you're de we're defining cultural teachers and practitioners in the RFP? Um, yeah, so really it would be anyone. Um, so say you're working with a fa with families um, from a particular community and culture. I would really um, lean on uh, how they are defining cultural teachers and practitioners. We're not talking about teacher in the formal sense necessarily of having teaching degrees and things like that. Um, a lot of times it's an elder in the community, but it's not always. Sometimes it's young people who are the practitioners and teachers of their culture. So we don't really have a rigid definition. I would just be looking for you and your application to tell me like, okay, we're defining it this way um, because that's how um, our community is defining it. So you, you've got a lot of freedom there. And I think there was another question that popped up about the slides. Sorry, I'm toggling it out. Uh, the slides you presented available, they will be later today. So the same place that you go to to get your Q&A and your RFP and check for the amendments and everything else, that funding opportunity webpage, we will have the recording um, and we will also have just a hard copy um, posted of the slides themselves. Yeah. And just to go back a minute, Hannah, uh, did my response make sense to you? Is that what you needed? OK, yes. OK, good. And I'm sorry, someone else is getting ready to say something. I cut you off. Yes, this is Miss Jeanette Charles at the Dad's Program. Um, just hi, following Jeanette. up on the hi. Sorry, I don't have my camera on, but I guess that's I OK. I know who you are, Jeanette. <laughs> Oh, and Jeanette, you just muted yourself. Um, yeah. Oh no, my other question, and I just forgot because we got I got happy. Um, <laughs> the extended, those will. Oh, the site you just mentioned, um, yeah. where to locate that? Is that in our original um, RFP paperwork? And if so, where page do we find that? Real quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is in the original um, paperwork. I can also. Um, 
let me see what page it's at. I think it's mentioned a couple of different places. Um, and I'll also include a link in what I send you. Let me see. Thank Don't you. That, I think that'll be real helpful. Yeah. And you know what? Um, while we're talking, I'm going to go in and um, right now grab the link and post it in the chat so you can just click on it because um, I don't have the name, um, the page number that it's listed on um, in the um, RFP right off my head. But let me do that. Yep, we just Thank posted you. it in the chat for all oh, of the attendees. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, everybody's Amazing. so much quicker than I am. <laughs> Thank, oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, there I see it right there in front of me. Oh, oh thank you, Natalie. And I'm also just going to go ahead and put my um, email in the chat. Again, it's in a couple of different places um, in the RFP. It'll be in the slide, but that way you have it. Um, if you've got other questions. Oh, and there's another one question come up. Is there a target number of families applicants should aim to reach with their proposed services? We do not have a target or a minimum that you have to um, reach for. Um, really think about designing the best quality program um, to serve you know, the families in your community and tell us what that is and what that looks like um, for the amount of money up to $300,000 that you think um, you need to do that. These are great questions, everybody. So any questions about content, timeline, anything at all? And Margaret, you actually reminded me of one thing. So yeah. um, just speaking to the point earlier about getting your applications for technical assistance in early, the priority deadline for asking for that assistance is May 8th, which is two weeks before the RFP closes. Um, and you can absolutely still submit those applications after that date, but we just, you know, due to capacity and um, just how many requests come in, we may or may not be able to schedule something. We're hoping that we'll be able to serve everyone who reaches out for help, but just uh, some extra emphasis on if you need that support, do it before May 8th. I will actually add that to the PowerPoint. Um, and I just also put it in the chat. So May 8th priority deadline. Um, thank you. Anything else at all? OK. Well, um, I want to thank everybody so much for being here today. We are very excited to see your applications. Cannot wait to see um, all the good work, work that you're doing in community and, and getting those to the um, rating committee. Um, do want to also mention if for any reason any of the dates in our timeline um, change, we would post that uh, again, same place. We keep talking about the HSD funding opportunity um, web page. Um, oh, and um, someone is coming. Jocelyn has a not a question, but a tip. She recently used a portal to submit a proposal for a different RFP. It was easier to use than I expected. That is great to hear. Um, one tip she has that she wants to share with the group is to have the cover sheet in front of you because you'll need to enter some basic information before you upload your documents. Thank you, Jocelyn. That's absolutely correct. You will need to um, enter in um, some contact information, um, some information about your agency and a couple of other things, I believe. And that's all right there on your cover sheet. So thank you. Great tip. I'm glad it was easier to use um, than anticipated. Any other final, any, uh, any tips anybody else has? Okay, well, I'm going to say good morning to everybody and wish you a wonderful rest of your day. I'll ask my team to please stay on board um, so we can um, wrap up a couple things we need to do. And everyone just have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, again, remember, I'm available for questions via email um, if you need me at a later time. Thank you. <laughs>